Good morning. It's nice to have you here for our service this morning. Welcome to all that's uh, looking in on our service today. A couple of announcements just before we begin. The uh, first one is the camping program for this year has been canceled uh, due to various stages of uh, various states. Maryland is even a different state where our camp is located. Uh, in Pennsylvania, so we're both in the same, pretty much the same position right now. So at this point in time, camping has been canceled. Also, we continuing to these online services. Hopefully not too much longer. Uh, we'll continue on each Sunday, which is usually after 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. So we pray that you will help to, you will be with us and looking on us at this point in time. This time the call of worship is a very good one. A very one that says, let his people pray. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. For the Lord takes delight in his people, his crown the humble with salvation. May the praise of God be in their mouths. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For the rule peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. This time, I'm three days in play on margin one. Thank you. 
and also we have a concern. Here's our cancer patients, also the identity of all of them uh, that continue on and each day. So be with all of them also today. We pray for the individuals that uh, have lost loved ones also over this time period. Continue to be with them because they really not, you can't go to the funeral homes, you can't be with them. So continue to be with all of them. Let's all bow our heads for time to pray. Our Father, we thank you this morning as we gather here. There are many things to be thankful for also about today, many good praises we've mentioned. We continue to be mindful and pray for all of our churches here, Father. We pray that things will get back to again so we can <clears throat> worship you in uh, our Sunday mornings. But also thank you for all the blessings of life you've given us. We still have uh, times in our homes, our families, our friends. And still, you're taking care of our needs as Christians and continue to be with us. Continue to pray that each one of us realize the importance of having our Heavenly Father to look over us, and guiding us and directing us in the way in which we should go. We thank you for those missionaries who are still in the field and uh, presenting the gospel of Christ. And we pray for them as they deal with their food shortages and things that are out there on the fields this morning. Also, the other military individuals, that they are uh, protecting us, but also involved with the, the COVID virus and things that are going also for them. Continue to be with our churches and small and large too, as far as our finances are concerned and people are going and pending services and those that have no online services that are, uh, cannot meet but be with all of them this morning. And also that our freedoms are being infringed upon uh, greatly for our freedom of worship. But continue to help us in those respects that people from our government our governor and people of our local authorities can get these things straightened out so we can get back to worship again. But also be with the individuals that we've spoken about, the good praises we've had, the individuals that have had surgeries in our home now, people that have uh, been uh, in our nursing homes, be with all of them or also. Be with those that have been taken back to the hospital, okay, especially be with her. Uh, guide each individual also for to realize and remember that you are on the throne, and you are controlling all these things in our country and our nation. Just guide us as individuals to know that we have you as our Heavenly Father. Continue each one to take care of our needs each day. Guide us this morning, Father, in all things we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This time, Van is going to come forward and sing for us. This morning. Thank you, Pastor Tim. This song is entitled At Calvary, and of course it's a famous, uh, well-known hymn. It's in our hymn rolls and many, many hymn rolls. Thank Mark and Maul for coming and the sound engineer Roy and Mark.
Thank you, Ben. Ben's had a very busy week, and uh, thankfully he can be with us to sing this time. Scripture lesson this morning uh, is taken from Psalm, the 32nd chapter, verses 1 through 11. Reading out of NIV this morning. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away, through my groaning all day long. For night and day your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. You forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you, while you may be found. Sure, when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach you. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble, and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, so they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. You righteous sing, all you are who are upright in heart. This morning we're going to think with you a few moments here on overcoming unhappiness. Using our, our text from the New Living Translation, it says in 32, verses 1 and 2, Oh, what joy for those whose rebellion is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those who record the Lord as cleanse them of sin, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. This, this one's for Margie Moore, she has a cat. <clears throat> a fable is told of a mature cat noticing a kitten chasing its tail. The cat asked, why are you chasing your tail? The kitten said, I have learned that the best thing for a cat is happiness, and happiness is in my tail. If I catch it, I shall have happiness. The old cat said, I have paid attention to the problems of the world, and have judged that happiness is in my tail. I have noticed, however, that I chased it after it, and it keeps running away from me. When I go to about my business, it seems to follow me wherever I go. What about the matter of happiness for all of us? What are you chasing in hopes of getting it? How can we be happy in an otherwise unhappy world? In Psalm 32, there are three ways we can be happy in an unhappy world. The first way is to be happy in an unhappy world is forgiveness. In verse 1, the psalmist said, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven. There is no greater blessedness or happiness than to be experienced the forgiveness of God. Also in verse 1, our sins, it said, are covered by God. We can't cover our own sins, only God can do that. We all have seen and used uh, those little calculators, electronic as it is, and somehow calculators on your phone and whatever. But what happens if you get your information confused and make an error? You just press the clear button, and automatically all of the information is eliminated from the calculator. Then you begin again without trying to sort out the previous mistakes. In fact, there is no record of your mistake. It is lost forever. That's what happens to our sins when God forgives us. The consequences may remain, but the guilt, the legal condemnation for the sin is gone. When this forgiveness by God happens, our happiness that was lost is now found again. 
Secondly, the second way to be happy in an unhappy world is to be honest. Verse 2 of Psalm 33 says, oh, me, Psalm 32 says this, David says, Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. David admits in his, in his verse 3 and 5, 3 through 5, that his dishonesty made him miserable, as all times it can be us. Day and night, the Lord's hand was upon him. Finally, he confessed his sin, and the Lord forgave him. His guilt was gone. We need to be honest about ourselves to be happy in this world. A pastor once preached a sermon on honesty one Sunday. On Monday morning, he took the bus to get to his office. He paid the fare, and the bus driver gave him too much change back. During the rest of the ride, the pastor was telling himself, boy, God's really been nice to me. I need that money pretty bad, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Then he said, the whole ride, something was happening to him. He couldn't live with himself. So before he got off the bus, he told the driver he made a mistake and gave him too much change. He tried to give the driver back the money. The driver just smiled and said, there is no mistake. I was at your church yesterday and heard you speak about honesty. So I decided to put you to the test this morning. That level of honesty it was important to tell the driver who that pastor really was. Think about this. He was, I'm sure that pastor was really happy to see the example that he could be to this individual bus driver. Sometimes we as individuals need to show ourselves and be honest about ourselves, yourself and myself. I remember a story just in, in passing that took place several years ago that I was up at Georgia's place with a group of people and I parked beside this one guy beside me in this old red car. So we went in, did some shopping. This is when George's place was when was, all the shopping was there, the people were there, buses were there. It was a busy place. So as I went in there, we shopped around a little bit for an hour or so, came back down, got in my van I used to have, and uh, took off. I heard this sound when I took off. It didn't sound right. It sounded like a screeching sound. I looked back in the mirror, I couldn't see anything. So I took off and Went home. So I went home, parked the van in the garage, looked back at the, at the uh, one side of the one of the bumpers. I saw this black streak on this bumper. What in the world is that? I must have hit that guy beside me. So I'm like the I'm like the, the preacher of the bus driver. I gotta get back and find out what happened. So I my wife said, What are you doing? I said, I gotta get back to summer. So I think that I must have hit that guy beside me when I came out of the parking lot. So I went back to this to the parking lot. God was still there. I came in, got his license plate number. I walked into Georgian Place, and this is when he had a loudspeaker of the whole building. Talk. So I put the license plate back over, over the, and I asked the announcer to put this over the license plate. Because right there, I saw a piece of rubber was off his side of his uh, bumper. I took it right off of him. So I waited there for about 10 or 15 minutes, and finally, the guy came up and, and found me. I said, let's go out to your vehicle. I hit the side of your vehicle here, and they're damaged, and I'll give you my insurance card and my number and everything. So, you know, this everything's right. I said, okay, that's fine. So I figured, well, that's the end of that. Just turn it in the insurance company and I'll take care of it. So I waited for a couple of weeks and nothing, nothing happened. And I found out that then the, my insurance, insurance agent said, the guy sent a letter back to our company and said, I traded my car. It wasn't worth that much money. So I didn't turn, my, didn't turn it in. And he said, first of all, no one ever did that to me. Like this, this man did, he said, he tracked me down, found me, and hit my car. Otherwise, most people just take off and never come back. I thought, I'm like the pastor with the bus driver. I said, man, that was great. I said, I did something no one saw. It. I could have walked away from that thing and nothing. But you see what it does when you do the right things, when no one's watching, but God is always watching. He's always seeing you. He's always seeing what you're doing. He's doing that. So, honesty is much we should be looking at uh, this morning. So we see that all these things happening, being honest about this, your sins you have committed, like David said, I confess all my sins to you, Lord, 
in verse 5. Now rather than that, trying to conquer our sins and cover them, God covers our sins. With him still of himself. He covers them on the cross of Calvary. You face up to our sins and stop doing them, stop doing your sin. Whatever it is, stop doing it. You'll be much happier in this world that we live in today. And finally, the third way to be happy in this unhappy world is by trusting. First of all, trusting God for the forgiveness of sins. In verse 5, God forgave David. David accepted God's forgiveness as a fact that wasn't going to be changed. Secondly, he trusted in God's protection. David said in verse 7 that God was his hiding place and is protecting him in time of trouble. God will do that for you and me this morning if you let him do that. This would really make us happy in this unhappy world when you trust in God's protection. Many examples of God's protection in the Old Testament, like Daniel in the lion's den. He was put there because he was uh, praying, he was doing something good. But he was put there and the king had to uh, put the lions in there with him. The lions overnight did nothing. The mouths were closed. Nothing happened to Daniel. As Daniel prayed to the Lord Jesus Christ, prayed to God saying to protect him, they did. In the morning, the king came down, saw Daniel still alive, and God said, Your God is powerful, Daniel. So Daniel came out of the lions then, and the people that accused him were put in, and the lions attacked them right away. Also, there's three fellows called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were put in a fiery furnace. And the king there fired up the furnace hotter and hotter than ever had been. In fact, so hot the people outside the furnace, some of them died. Inside, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's also a fourth person in the fire people would see with them. And when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, they weren't even covered, they couldn't even smell smoke on them. So, so they were trusted the Lord. They prayed to the Lord all the time. That, yes, if they're going to go fine, if they're going to stay, the Lord's going to help them. Which he did. There are many other examples of God protecting his people and rejoicing God gave them praise. When the people were at the Red Sea, and Moses was there, and people going through the Red Sea, he opened the Red Sea for them so they could get through and escape to the Egyptian army. I mean, example after example after example of God's protection for all of us. Thirdly, David also trusted God for guidance, guiding him along his pathway of life, as we should. He knows that God advised him to watch over him. Following God's instruction will allow us to live the best possible life. Living the way God wants us to live will bring us happiness. Verse 9 states, Don't be like the, the horse or the mule that have no understanding, but must be controlled by a body. We should be responsive to God and obey his word to have happiness in this unhappy world. Trusting the Lord's instruction, David said in verse 11, Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all ye who are upright in heart. Rejoice and sing to be happy in this world. There was a story told of a king who was suffering from depression and was unhappy. He was advised by his astrologist and astrologer that he would be cured if the shirt of a happy man was brought to him to wear. People went out from all parts of the kingdom seeking such a person. After a long, long search, they found a man who was really happy, but he did not possess a shirt. He didn't own one. He didn't have one. This man was happy, even though he had no material possession like a shirt, he was very happy. Why? Because he had happiness in his heart. You can be happy in an unhappy world because of the forgiveness of God. Being honest about ourselves and about the sins we have committed. Trusting in the forgiveness of God. The protection of God and the instruction of God. This morning we can start by asking Jesus Christ into our hearts. Then we will be a new creature in Christ. All that unhappiness that we have witnessed within us will be given to Jesus Christ. He will carry those burdens, he has said in the scriptures. The verse says also 
in Philippians 4, 4, our ending verse is this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. So, if you're watching this service this morning without Jesus Christ, open your heart and your life to Christ. Ask him into your heart this morning. Don't wait. Now is the day. Today is the day of salvation. Today is your day to accept Jesus Christ and make him your father, and you will be one of your children. Think about that and pray about that this morning. Let's all pray. Uh, let's all bow heads for prayer. Please. Our Father, we pray this morning. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for all the things you've left upon. But we pray that if there's someone out there <clears throat> this morning watching our service, that if their life is not right, if they're deep forgiveness of their sins, if they need to open up and straighten and step their whole life out, just ask the Father into their heart. Believe in Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, and you'll be saved, it says in Romans. Pray for anybody out there this morning that doesn't cry for the same. Make this day your day, a day of wonderful happiness in the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For our closing song this morning, Dan and I and Mark are going to sing. What a day that will be. And uh, the word will be back on the board with us. You can sing along with us as we sing this morning. Amen. Mm-hmm.